Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about product management in Odoo 17. So basically, product management is very important inside Odoo. As you all know, we have modules like sales, purchase, inventory and all. So in all these modules, we have this menu called products and we use products in almost everywhere inside Odoo. So products are very much important because we have certain things like the product types and so on. So let me show you how to create a product and how to manage a product inside Odoo. So come with me and let's do the product management. So now let me show you how to manage products, okay? As you all know, products can be found inside uh, modules like sales, purchase, inventory and all. So I'll show you how to create a product and how we manage it. So let it be inside sales, okay? I'm opening the sales module. And here in sales, we have a menu called products. So click on that and under products, you have related things like products, product variants and all. So I'm opening products over here. And the thing is that here you can see all the products which are created till date in our system. Okay. So that's the Kanban view of the products. You will get the list view. Here's the list view. And also you have the activities. So activities corresponding to products can be viewed here. And if you want to schedule any, you can do that also from you. So I'm going back to the Kanban view of the products. So you can see under a single card, you have the image of the product. Okay, the name of the product, how many variants it has, and also you have the price in the on-hand quantities, that is the quantity of the product. Okay, so these are all starred. If you want to, you know, for while using this product inside a sales or a purchase order, for easy access, that is no need to search. Once you search, I mean, once you star these products, they'll be coming on top. Okay, so I'll show you how to create a new product. Simply click on new. So this is the product creation form. So here you have to provide the name of the product. So I'm giving the name as a mug. Okay. And I'm starring it. So that's done. Now here you have so much things like can be sold, can be purchased, can be expensed, recurring or even can be rendered. Okay. So can be sold is nothing. But if you want to make this product available to be sold, then simply check it. If you want this to be available for to be purchased, check it. And if you want it to be expensed, then you have to check it. Expensed in the sense, you can, you know, uh, it can be selected in an expense as an expense product. And this is the recurring, which is the subscription product. Okay. And this is uh, rented, which is allowing it to be a rental product. So you can enable if all is needed. Currently, I'm only focusing on sold and purchased. So I've enabled it. By default, both will be enabled. Now, under the general information of the product, you have things like the product type. So, Basically, we have so much product types right now. So product type is simply, I'll show you what it is. So a storable product is a product for which you manage stock. Okay. The inventory app has to be installed for it. And a consumable product is a product for which stock is not managed. Okay. A service is a non-material product you provide. So as you all know, these are the things which comes. Okay. So here you have so much product types, which is consumable, service, storable, booking fees, combo, event ticket, event booth, and also course. So consumable product are the ones for which we don't keep account. Okay. So uh, like as, as it shows before, suppose take a example of a cover. Okay. A cover in the sense we'll get covers from, you know, textiles or even some other shops. When you purchase your products will be put in a cover. So there are some shops that might be selling covers. So for them, a cover is a storable product. And if you go to a textile and they are putting it inside a cover and giving it to you, they don't have a count for this product. For them, it's a consumable product. So same product can come under different types based on what kind of business it is. Okay. So consumer product is that and you have storable products, then you have service. So a doctor, teacher and all is a service. Okay. And then you have the booking fees. So you can create a product as booking fees. And while doing a booking and all, you can use this product as the booking fees. Then you have the combo product, as you'll know what a combo is. Then you have the event ticket as well as event booth. So you can create a product as an event ticket or event booth and you can use it in the events. Then you, you have a course. So if you're doing any kind of courses and all, what do you have to do? Like in the e-learning and all, you'll be having so much courses. So instead of choosing a course, you can create a product named as a course. Okay, if, uh, I'm creating a course called Python. So that product can be used as a course. So that's the different uh, products. So let it be consumable product itself. 
and then you have invoicing policy which is ordered quantities and delivered quantities so you're sitting ordered quantities means the invoice will be generated only for the amount or the quantities which are ordered and if you're choosing uh, the uh, what delivered quantities means invoice will be generated for the quantity which is delivered to you suppose you are ordering five quantities and they are delivering you four quantities so you only need to invoice for those four quantities so that's the delivered quantities okay and then you have the unit of measure that is you can set a unit of measure for this product so currently i'm using units by default it will be units you have so much unit of measures and the purchase unit of measure so how to purchase this product in what units of measure it should be purchased so here also i'm giving units and if you want to create a repair for it then you can simply check it over here so create repair is create a linked repair order on sale order confirmation of this product okay so according to uh, like according to odoo what it means is that once you're using this product in a sale order but parallelly or you know you can create a repair or order linked to that sale order okay based on the confirmation of that particular product and here you have the sales price of the product so sales price is the price at which product is sold to the customer so for a unit i'm giving ten dollars and you have the customer taxes you can add the tax over here so by default 15 percentage is the tax then you have the tax cloud category so this refers to tic which is the taxability information codes these are used by tax cloud to compute specific tax rates for each product type the value set here prevails over the one set on the product category okay so if something is set to the product category means that will be used over here so you have the other tax category as well and then you have the cost of the product so value of the product used to value the product when the purchase cost is not known so this is basically used to compute margins okay so i'm putting the cost is one per unit and here you have the product category it can be anything you have separate option where you can create product category so i'm putting it under all itself and then you have the part number so you can give a number over here the version and all can be provided okay and then you have the upc ean code the oem number the product template tags brands and if you want to configure tags you can do that as well here you have the internal notes where you can specify any kind of internal notes regarding the product you have the attributes and variants over here so attributes and variants are basically when there are variants for the product so i'm adding an attribute say the color so mug is there in different colors so values i'm giving it as white black green and pink okay so these much variants i have that's what i'm specifying and if you want to configure so if there is a case like mugs should be sell for hundred dollars so for black mug there should be a race in price which is two hundred dollars only for black that is the variant black what will you do you'll have to go to configure so before that we have to save it sorry save it go to configure and then you will have this black right so here you can add the extra money okay whatever the extra money is you can add it over here okay so that's how you add extra money for any particular variant going back to the product so that's how you add the attributes and variants and here you have the sales variant selection so that that is to ha show how to choose the variants so once you use this product in a sale order it will show as a product configurator so from there you can uh, you know add uh, variants as well as you have the order grid entry so these are two methods for the variant selection then you have the sales tab where you have the upsell and cross sell you have the optional products here so these optional products are suggested whenever the customer hits add to cart okay so if there's an example given that is for computers and on warranty as well as the software will be shown as optional products once you click on add to cart then you have accessory products so if if you are creating a product as a phone or something then your phones and all can be an accessory product even the case of the phone can be accessory products okay and then you have the alternative products so same in the case of a phone uh, if you are buying a keypad phone means as an alternative product uh, they'll be showing you things like the um touch screen phones and all so that can be alternative products so suggest so alternative to your customer those products show up on the product page now here you have a product a product description for self order so you can specify a 
product description and the e-commerce shop. So to make it available in website or POS, you have to enable this. Okay. So if it if you want it to be an available in POS, then check it. Once you check it, such things come, which shows the category of the product under which category it should be shown. Okay. So I'll put drinks. Okay. And then available in self-order. If this product is available in self-order screens, whether it should be available. So I'm putting, I mean, checking it. And to weigh with scale. Okay. That is to check if the product should be weighted using the hardware scale integration. So if yes, you can check it as well. And then you have the e-commerce shop to make it available in which website and also under which category. Okay. So I'll put it under furniture. Okay. So that's done. And then you have the extra product media that is one. If you want to add any media regarding the product, you can do that. And then here you have the purchase. So under purchase, you can add a vendor. So from which vendor you are going to buy this product, you can set two, three vendors for this product and the price of the vendor. Okay, so that's uh, what comes under the purchase. You have the vendor bills also and also the purchase description. So control policy is on order and quantities or on received quantities. That is similar to the, uh, you know, invoicing policy. Here you have the billing policies. So whether it is to control bills based on ordered quantities or based on delivered, I mean, received quantities. Then you have the inventory where you have operations like the road, which is a drop ship, subcontract on order, buy, replenish, or even manufacture, resupply, drop ship, whatever the roads are, you will be uh, going through this in detail. And then you have the logistic details where you have the responsible person, the customer lead time. So customer lead time is the delivery lead time in days. It's the number of days promised to the customer between the confirmation of the sale order and the delivery. Then you have the HS code, which is the standardized code for international shipping and goods declaration. At the moment, only used for the FedEx shipping and provider. So that's the HS code. You can provide the code over here. And you can set the origin of goods, which is the rules of origin determine when goods originate. Okay. And then you have the description for delivery orders, for receipts and for internal transfers. You can spe specify the description over here. You have the accounting section where you have the receivables, where you can set an income account for the product. You have the payables where you can set expense account and pay difference, I mean price difference account. Then you have the UNSPSC category, which is a code related to this product, which is used for EDI in Colombia, Peru and all. So regional things. And here you have automatic email at invoice. So for that, you can set an email template over here. Okay. And then finally, you have the eBay section, which is to sell it on eBay or no. So this is how you basically, um, you know, configure a product. Okay, I'm saving it. Once you save it, I'm going to the general information. And here you have the extra prices, the documents, go to website, the variance of the product. Here you can see it shows four because this product has four variants. So I've given four colors of the product mug. And if you go to more, you have this sold units, purchased units. Well, by the time you sell and purchase it, the count will change over here. You have the put away rules, the bill of materials and all. Okay, so that's how you set the product. Okay, I'm simply saving it. And if you want to replenish it, that is when the quantity, that is the ordered quantity and all, or I mean, the quantity of the product is is zero. Okay, that is the stock is zero and all you can use this replenish to buy the products. So I'm starting it and going to the products menu. You can see the mug is given here. So it's consumable. That's the reason why you can't see this. I'm saving it. So here you can see on hand quantity. So as I said before, for consumable product, there won't be a count or not. But for a storable product, there's a count. So on hand quantity can be updated from here. Okay. So no stock on hand currently. Go back. And you can update the quantity by clicking on this. So click on new. Add the product which is mug for each. If you are creating means you can add. Multiple can't be added. Set the owner of the product. On hand I'm putting 10. Okay. So 10 quantity is there. Adding one more for black. Similarly. Quantity is... This is how you add the quantity, okay? 
on hand quantity so for black i'm giving it as 10 okay so that's how you update the on hand quantity of the product now if you just take a look you can see 20 units are there 10 of the white one and 10 of blue i mean black ones okay so that's how you update the online i mean on hand quantity and now you can use this product inside a sale order so let me show you how here you have the new icon and just adding a random customer okay there's a limit for the person now if you go to add product here you will be having mug so as i said before this configurator will come and from here you can choose the product i'm choosing black confirming it see this is how you add a i mean add the product which you created okay it's that simple now you can confirm the sale order and continue the procedure so that's how you manage products in Odoo 17 thank you so much for watching see you in the next video